Welcome back to Inside the Pride. I have some very special guests here to help me break down the first five weeks of the season. DetroitLions.com writers Tim Twentyman, Michael O'Hara. We heard last week head coach Dan Kimball say the bye week here in week six could not have come at a better time from both of your point of views. How good of timing is this bye week this season? Probably a great time to get out of town, I guess, just what happened uh, last week. But I know what he means mm -hmm. in terms of injuries and getting guys back. I think it's a good time for him. Well, and he allows you to have a deep dive, right? Sure. I mean, you can take a look at the entire operation that's led to one and four practice. Do we need more or less of it? Pads, more pads, some scheme changes. And then Mike mentioned the injuries. And I think that's huge. You know, getting a guy like DeAndre Swift back, he's expected to be back. DJ Chark, too. So, you know, I think it's, it's, it's perfect timing. You kind of take a step back, clear your head, and now you got to get ready for a 12 game stretch. Let's do a deep dive into the defense first. We'll get that over with. I know defense has had some woes. What have you guys seen from this defense that you would like to see changed come week seven? The old days of the, like the Chicago Bears of 1985 winning the Super Bowl with a team that gave up you know, 185 yards or something like that. Those are gone and I think the more the more uh, turnovers you get, the more you harass the quarterback, the better chance you have to win because you get extra possessions and all that, and they haven't gotten many of those. You know, the harassing the quarterback one's big for me because it, it's a passing league, right? It's an offensive league. Well, how do you counter that? I think you speed up the quarterback. You put him in long down in distant situations. And you talk about sacks, and that's obviously the number that everyone looks at, right? But pressure. you can also pressure, yeah. right? Hurries, knockdowns, the, all those things affect a quarterback. And just across the board, there's not enough of that through the first five games. I think something Aaron Glenn, Dan Campbell, these, this defense has to figure out. They've got to be able to affect the quarterback. At the very least, chase him out of the pocket and make him alter. You get, you'll get it, the platforms they call it all that make them change on the flip side you have an offense who leads the NFL in 20 plus yard receptions and also in touchdowns they're tied with 18 with the Buffalo Bills the offense has been explosive but it got shut down week five at New England what do you think contributed to those woes on offense there well Bill Belichick I think plays a big <laughs> factor in that too that's pretty good defensive mind over there in New England he's done that for a lot of years he's done it in the Super Bowl obviously um, so I think that's part of it but I think if you take the totality of the five games it's been really strong Jared's played pretty well they've got some weapons they've been able to run the football all the things that Dan Campbell and Ben Johnson wanted to do so I, you know I, you can look at that game in New England and say yeah there's a little bit concerning but I think if you take the totality of it. It, it. It's been pretty good to start and hopefully that continues the next 12 games. Yeah, yeah Tim, and I agree with you too. I wouldn't like abandon ship on, on the offense right now. No. It's carried the team. Everything good that's happened to this team and, the, and it's happened through the offense, including, look, they've given the people at Ford Field entertainment value. Mm -hmm. you, you, leave, you, know, you leave that building after a game and go, that was fun. Yeah. I didn't win, but that was fun. I asked you guys for your top performers on offense and defense. Tim, let's hear from you first top performer on offense? Uh, to me, it's been Penny Sewell. Uh -huh. You know, you can, there's a lot of not names there. Swift, obviously, Goff, you know, has played well. But to me, Penny Sewell's just been a rock. I mean, you look at his five games, he's allowed a half sack and he's allowed two quarterback hits. He's pro football focuses top ranked right tackle. He's been great in the run game. I think he's kind of solidified that offensive front. He's been really, really good. And boy, he's going to be an anchor on the right side there for about 10 years. We hope. hope. Pobler, year two. Defensive-wise, Mike, who is leading by example out there for you? You have to ask. I do. Malcolm Rodriguez. Ah, uh, yes. I, I just think he's. I, I think he's exceeded anything they could have possibly thought to get from a sixth-round draft pick. Now I know, you know, he got a lot of attention coming in. You know, just a, a good kid from from Oklahoma State. But I think he's he's at very at the very least ex done what they thought he could do. Mm -hmm. I think he's exceeded it. All right, bye week is here. Lions will not return to play until week seven on the road at the Dallas Cowboys. You want to say something already, Mike? Tell us. Just tell us. No, that's okay. I mean, what, what a team to come back against, though, yeah. because the Cowboys well, a few are teams. They're you got rolling. Miami and Green Bay, too. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Well, look, the way it is, you know, if you want to do something, go out, you got to go out and win games. Work, mm -hmm. Play the schedule in front of you. Do the best you can. So, special thanks to Tim and Mike for joining me here on Inside the Pride.